And uh, once again, we're in the house of the Lord to render worship, to commune with him, right? And as we will see in a little bit, that we're not alone. Well, we know we have the promise. So whenever two or three are gathered, what happens? Who's here? Jesus. Jesus is here. Amen. And I said it last week, I think it was, if our spiritual eyes would be open, you would see how filled this place is. If not, you can go just go back to that account in the Bible. When the Assyrian army came and the prophet was there and his servant started just panicking and he prayed Lord open the eyes of this fellow here and when the eyes were opened myriads of the angel angelic host ready for battle so you are not alone I am not alone we're not alone so that is a good, good, good news. That whenever we feel that uh, everything is gone, we've got to remember that God has promised. God himself promised. Lo, I am with you all the days until the end of this world. So I want to invite you to, you folks that are watching or will be watching later on, to have this promise with you all along. God is with us. It is a promise. But a lot of times it depends on my attitude. Whether I want him close to me or far away from me. That's up to us. That's the freedom of choice that he gives us. Isn't that something? Wonderful God. He doesn't impose his will. He let us choose whom we will be with. Así que hoy estamos en el día sábado del Señor. Estamos aquí transmitiendo en vivo desde Carolina del Sur. Para todos aquellos del, del habla hispana, estamos contentos que usted nos pueda eh, estar con nosotros, eh, asistir a nuestra, nuestra, nuestro culto y espero que Dios los Cuide, los proteja, los siga bendiciendo, porque Dios es un Dios de amor que Él tiene el interés suyo y el mío a cada instante. Que Dios los bendiga y tengan un feliz sábado. I have chosen to change a little bit the format for last Sabbath and this Sabbath. And there's a reason for it. This notion of uh, what we're speaking about last week and this present week, about thanksgiving, I was pressed upon my heart months ago, probably around the spring, thinking about thanksgiving. So I have been studying quite, quite a bit the Bible and the inspired writings. Where are we as people of God in this time of the world's history? So I have taken the liberty to change the format in a little bit, not, not too much. So last week, I entitled the sermon, Why Should I Be? thankful to God and I think and I think it was a blessing to the hearers and today I will continue with that same topic of thanksgiving and I have entitled it everlasting thanksgiving everlasting thanksgiving I want us to ponder on the following story. How many have heard of this lady, Corey Ten Boom? How many have heard of that? How many have 
read upon her story is quite a bit. It's quite a bit interesting. And I just happened to put her date of birth on her day that he died. And she was born and died on the same day. 91 years apart. But with the story behind Miss Corey, it is something remarkable and that has inspired thousands, if not millions, of people across the world with her testimony. She is the one, and her sister, her family, that inspired this movie, The Hiding Place. How many have watched The Hiding Place? It is something, it is a masterpiece based on a true story, The Hiding Place. And right there you see in the, in the uh, slide next to it, Miss Corey standing right there in her house in the Netherlands. That is The Hiding Place, where, where they hid so many uh, Jews during the, the war under the Nazi oppression, the Nazi regime. But this is what I want us to focus on. And from here we will build up. Thank God for the fleas. How many have ever thought of thinking about flies, mosquitoes, ticks? But here, thank God for the fleas. And the story the story that is uh, that is told is, and I will just uh, I just I just don't want to miss something here. In 1844, 1844, her granddaddy started a weekly prayer service for the Jews, because back then, a hundred years before this catastrophe, this Holocaust happened, he started out praying for the Jews. And back then, the story goes that the Jews were already being ostracized, despised. That was our granddaddy. A hundred years later, on the month of February, Corey and her family were arrested by the Gestapo. They had been successful hiding people there. And they had a watch factory. That was their trade. So people would come and go. People would come and go. But then they prepared what you just saw. What was uh, to become known as the hiding place. And an informant gave them away. So they came and were arrested. A hundred years after her granddaddy started praying for the Jews. Miss Corey and her sister Betsy were taken, I will skip a lot of history there, were taken to those uh, camps that the Nazis put together. And they ended up close to Berlin. That's where they were. Labor camps. But it says that the camp was so filthy that fleas were everywhere. Corey's sister, Betsy, who was imprisoned with her, insisted that 1 Thessalonians 5.18, which was our memory text last week, says God's will for them to give thanks in everything. But this could not, Corey could not reconcile this text with the fleas until she realized why the guards didn't come into their barracks to make them stop playing and singing hymns. The guards, the Nazis, right? They don't want to get infested with fleas, and that's why they would not come. So the prisoners were free to worship and study the Bible. The fleas, yes, even the fleas were agents of grace 
and something to be thankful for. Give thanks in all circumstances, for this is the will of God in Christ Jesus for you and for me. Now, what I just read, I took it, and I'll, I need to give you the credit, to this website, Moments with the Book. And VCG, from our Daily Bread, asks this question. What are some of the fleas in your lives? They aren't the big difficulties, but the petty annoyances. They are the little trials from which we can't escape. Is it possible that they are the one of the ways the Lord teaches us spiritual lessons and help us to increase our endurance? When we are tempted to grumble, let's remember the fleas and give thanks. Isn't that something? Are you getting it? Because we're going to build from here. Modern secularism that has come into the church blames God for everything and glorifies Him for nothing. Anything I receive from God is due solely to His own goodness his kindness, love, mercy, and grace. It is only because of God's character of forbearance, patience, and kindness that I have life at all. Amen. It's only because of his goodness. If it's not, if it wasn't for the Lord's mercies, we are not consumed. That's Lamentations 3, 22 and 23. If it wasn't for God's kindness and love, you and I would not be here right now. We were here last week. We wouldn't be here right now. In fact, the King James Version says consume. Another version says utterly destroyed. If it wasn't for his mercies, we would have been destroyed during this week. They are new. His mercies are new. His compassion faileth, faileth not. Great is thy faithfulness. So, are you glad for being, being alive today? Yeah. Huh? Amen. Do you realize how many traps did the devil put on your path this past week to wipe you out? Out completely. But God in his love and mercy for you and for me preserved us to be here. So this don't take it as oh as an accident or take it for granted that you and I came up, came to church. Not at all. Not at all. In the Christian walk, brothers and sisters and friends that are watching us, is everything about attitude. Attitude. Your attitude not your aptitude, will determine your altitude. Now try, I have watched those people that work in circus. The people that are on those ropes, are they heavy sets or they are so thin? And this is so poignant, and for you folks that are not watching this slide, it's an elephant walking on a rope. It is not, is your attitude, not your aptitude, that will determine your altitude. What is your aptitude? What does the word aptitude mean? What you are, what you have accomplished. Oh, sometimes we think because I have so much in the bank account or I have so many degrees hanging from the wall that that's where I, I am. And you're not, you're not. I have always said to people that are so arrogant that come in the line of work that I am and they want to just treat you like nothing. So listen, folks, I had I said it once. You realize that you and the poorest of the people in this town will just last after you expire about 24 hours. And then you start to stink. Bottom line. Bottom line. But it's the sinful nature in us that we think 
that we are better than. It is not the it is not the aptitude, but the attitude in which we face life, especially, especially our spiritual life. It is not by degree or pedigree. I have said this for years. It's not by degree or pedigree that I'm gonna walk the name golden stairs. You know that song? Huh? Walk them golden stairs? Yes. It is not what, what I have, or what I have, I have accomplished, but instead it is because of having the mindset of Jesus Christ. Philippians 2. What did he do? He was God. He is God. And he will always be God, Jesus Christ. Yes? Amen. Yes? Amen. But even being God, he did not walk about like God. Right? He humbled himself beyond our imagination. In fact, when that fella said, Lord, can I come and spend the night with you? What did he say? The foxes have holes, right? And what else? The birds have their nests, but the Son of Man has nowhere to lay. He said, can you imagine the monarch of the universe humbling himself to that extent that he was a homeless man? Now, everlasting thanksgiving. Jesus is our perfect example. And I hope that you and I come when the meeting place is open to come and learn and when you are not here i hope that we are daily daily eating of his word because only by beholding him we can be changed here are some examples how thankful god jesus was to god his father and here's six examples here number one he said, because you have given me all these things from the wise and prudent, you have rebuilt. He was giving thanks. He gave thanks when he was performing that miracle on the 4,000 crowd, on the 5,000 5, crowd, when he was about to raise Lazarus. And at the Passover, thank you. Did Jesus have to thank anything or for anything? Did he? Did he have to pray? Did he have to have to get baptized? No. Sinless. Yet he did it to give us an example. So you and I don't have any excuse at all. And if you think that you and I, if we think, you and I, that we will get to heaven by skipping some of these things that Jesus did himself, we are sorry mistaken. We're sorry mistaken. Because we cannot get to heaven by passing even the things that the Son of God did to give us and to set example for us. Now, everlasting thanksgiving. Ample, ample demonstrations of being thankful here on earth. God, the Son of God, Jesus Christ. But listen to what Revelation tells us. And we read it last week. And all the angels stood around about the throne and about the elders and the four beasts and fell before the throne on their faces and worshiped God, saying what? Amen. Blessing and glory and wisdom and thanksgiving and honor and power and might be unto God forever and ever. Seven is the number of perfection. Is attributed to God. Here we have seven, seven, blessing and glory, wisdom, thanksgiving. So, I have always said that this, this time that we are living on this earth, whatever your age is, we're here for a reason. We're just pilgrims. We're not permanent residents. We're just pilgrims on the way to work. 
Where are you going? Heaven. Yo, you don't know where you're going? Heaven. Well, at least one has that in mind. We are not. We are not, folks. Don't. Don't. Don't lose that. We cannot afford to lose our goal. Where are we going to? This world is not my home. I'm just a passing through. My treasures are laid up somewhere beyond the blue. The angels beckon me from heaven's open door, and I can't feel at home in this world anymore. That should be the attitude of each one of us here and you folks that are watching. But it's not always easy. It's not always easy. Because, like I said at the beginning, God has given us freedom of choice. And you have a choice to make every time you come to church. What kind of attitude are you coming with? Is it something like, here am I. Bless me if you can. Or do I come in with a spirit of humility, being thankful to God that he has preserved me. He has given me everything that I need and the wants throughout the week. So why everlasting uh, everlasting thanksgiving? Well, in heaven, in heaven, that's what takes place every day. But the reason why it's an everlasting thanksgiving is because we serve a God, God our creator. He is uh, everlasting as well. Before the mountains were formed, before the whole world came into existence, from everlasting to everlasting, you are God. Also, because his mercy is everlasting, Psalm 105, because he has loved us with an everlasting love, Jeremiah 31.3, and so because he has made an everlasting covenant with us, and because his word is everlasting, Psalm 119.89, and because he has promised you and has promised me an everlasting life. Whosoever believeth in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. Amen. Do you believe that? Huh? Amen. This passage here, written in the book of Daniel, recounts that haughty king by the name of Nebuchadnezzar. And we know the story. That at the there was a time that God had to step in and humble him to the point that seven years he was like a wild beast out, out there. Read the scripture. It says that his hair was as long as feathers. He lost his mind. But at the end of time, I, Nebuchadnezzar, lifted my eyes to heaven. And my understanding returned to me. And I blessed the Most High and praised and honored him who lives forever. For his dominion is what? An everlasting dominion. And his kingdom is from generation to generation. That's why, that's why we need to exercise everlasting thanksgiving, gratefulness. Because if you are making plans to live there, we have to start here. How to be thankful. How to be grateful. How to praise him. How to worship him. But here's the key, uh, folks, and look at the under underlining. The Buchanan says, when my understanding returned to me. You know, folks, we do a lot of things like robots. I have played church big time for a number of years. Oh, I learned how to play church from when I, since I was a little fellow. Grew up in the church, doing everything. The only church that I have not had any position in the church has been uh, deaconess and treasurer. Of course, deaconess, right? That's for the ladies. 
But everything else, everything else. And I can go back and say, my Lord, my Lord. How I played church, and this is not unique to me. Danny Frederberg from the, the former cathedral uh, tenor, he recounts, he relates his story, his dad being a pastor. But there was something empty in his life. It's right there. Go, uh, go and check it out on YouTube. Thank God, Danny, just like myself, Eventually, we have come to our senses. And I think that's what we need to do every day. Make sure that our senses are in us to realize what are, what are we here for? Who are we serving? Why do I need to go to church? Why do I need to get engaged in studying God's word? Why do I need to engage in talking to him? And above all, why, why should I tell others of his soon coming? But I cannot do that if my senses are not in me. If I do not realize, if I do not realize who Jesus is and his salvation. Oh, I cannot go. Yeah, you cannot go. Many, many folks cannot go, but they can be on the phone. If you can be on the phone talking to your friends about whatever you can surely pick up your phone and say hey i'm praying for you drop a note a little verse will go a long ways in eternity thanksgiving will be due to our god okay so if i am not comfortable in praising him in thanking him here do you think that i would have the same stamina to do that the same attitude the same approach no folks no, the only thing we will carry to heaven is our character, and that will be part of our character, how to tra be transformed by his might, by his spirit, to learn here what the inhabitants of the unfallen worlds do. Now, thanksgiving in heaven will have no expiration date. There will be no due date or out of date for Thanksgiving. Thanksgiving will not be discreet or obsolete or upstaging. You know what upstaging is? Calling my attention, calling the attention to myself. No, everything will be directed to the Lamb of God. Thanksgiving will be for eternity and it will not be unwelcome or uncalled for. Praising the Lord has power. And I, I have been wrestling with this idea. Why, why our church is not growing as it should? Pay attention to this. And this will be something that you will be interested for your church wherever you are. Why? Now we claim we, 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 we are children of something. Always deflecting responsibility and putting it on somebody else. Oh, now we can claim the pandemic. That's why we're not coming to church. Which is a big lie. When we engage in, in a spirit of thanksgiving daily, daily and moreover, when we're here, you know that 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 ambience, that environment just pushes the devil away. Murmuring stops, gossiping stops, because you don't have time but to praise the Lord. All of those things. are rid you get rid of those things when we praise there is a song there is a song made popular by the imperials quartet back in the 80s and it says praise the lord 
He can work through those who praise him. Praise the Lord for our God inhabits praise. Praise the Lord for the chains that seem to bind you, serve only to remind you that they drop powerless behind you when you praise him. You have difficulties in life, praise him. Somebody is hurting you, praise him. Is it difficult? Yeah? Thank you, Jesus. In the flesh, it's difficult. It's very difficult. It's very difficult to forgive and forget. But through his spirit, we get the attitude of Jesus Christ. Amen. That when you and I come to him and we mess up, right? Like we were talking in the, in, in, in the um, uh, Sabbath school. We mess up big time. But we come to him. He not, he not only forgives, but he what? Forgets. forgets. You hear out there, oh, I'll forgive, but I won't forget. That's not the spirit of God. But when you and I are in tune with him, in communion with him, that spirit will replace that sinful one. We will forgive and forget. Now, what about thanksgiving? What about praise? What about worship? What about prayer? Are we getting it? And let me just back up a little bit. We want this church and your church to thrive. Let's get in a spirit of thanksgiving. Let's not come like, oh, you're lucky that I showed up. I have made up my mind a long time ago. One person, one person, one individual willing to, that's what I care. That's what I care. You know, I go to YouTube and I see how many people are following this and that, in the thousand, in the million sometimes. But then you look at the content, what they're following. It's nothing that will elevate you or pre prepare you and I to walk the streets of gold. Then I look at preaching. It's minimal. People are not interested. Let's forget about them. What about us here? Unless, unless we change our approach of being grateful, thankful, with a heart of gratitude, then, then our worship will, will be different. And then we will see these pews being filled. Unless we do that, we will just continue what we're doing right now. Friday morning at 5 o'clock in the morning, I'll just give you a little. Out of a sudden, I came down at work with a terrible abdominal pain. I don't. I, I, I'm not that wimp or get sick that easy. And while I, I'm, I, I am in charge of the unit, they're requiring my help, and I cannot. I, have, I had to ask someone else to step in. And it was so, so bad. Right, right now, I'm standing with, before you with quite a bit of pain every time I move because I have my muscles. In fact, Yesterday, um, I was really, really concerned, and I had to start going down the list, make sure that everything is in check. That's how, how bad I felt. By yesterday evening, I felt much, much better. And of course, the encouragement of my wife and the kids, and you know, that, that helps healing. Now, above all, it makes, it makes the pain go a little bit. Folks, are we kidding ourselves? The devil is trying to destroy us at every bend of the way. If it wasn't for his mercies, if it wasn't for his mercy, who knows if I would be here right now. I'm telling you, I am, I am not that one to use um, scare tactics. It's just a fact. It's just a fact. So I'm going to tell you right now that I am thankful for God that he preserved me yesterday Friday. 
when I got home, of course, my wife and the kids had plans and, you know, I just downplayed it like that, but I got really concerned how I looked, how I felt. I am thankful for God for his loving kindness in spite of my shortcomings. I am grateful that he gave me the gift of life today to be here before you and to be able to utter in a some fashion the message that he has given me throughout this week. So what are you thankful for? Is anyone here that is that feels the, the conviction of thanking him, of changing his or her life? Huh? What are you thankful for? Does anyone anyone want to say something to the Lord? Because I will give you some information in the next few slides and then we will finish. But why don't we take a little time if you are really thankful? Now, if you're a, if you don't feel it, that hey, don't lie to the Lord. Don't be like Ananias and Sapphira. Okay? That's dangerous. But if you feel that you have something to say to the Lord, would you like to take Sam? I'm just thankful for the Lord Jesus Christ dying for my sins. Amen. Yeah. Amen. Anyone else? I'm thankful for my children and my family. Amen. Anyone else? Anyone else? Gay. For healing. For healing, yes. Anyone else? Anyone else? I'm thankful that he's faithful to us so that we're not all sick. Isn't that the truth? Isn't that the truth? And folks, I am not expecting a sudden change. And like I said last week, don't tell me that you're shy. No, 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 you're not shy. You just don't want to do it. Basically, freedom of choice. I know that. I realize that. But I got to tell you, folks, that unless we change our attitude, you can say, well, the Lord blesses me. Yeah. Yeah. Sun and rain shines upon evil and, and, and good people. So what's the difference? And I told you last week, seven days, seven days he blessed with all love the people that were outside the ark. Seven days. They were doomed, but he still blessed them. For seven days he kept them alive. When the light of Christ is shining in the soul, the lips will be filled with praise and thanksgiving to God. Don't take this lightly, folks. Let's not. When the light of Christ is shining into the soul, the lips will be filled with praise and thanksgiving to God. Your prayers, your performance, your duty, your benevolence, your self-denial will not be the theme of your thought or conversation. Jesus will be magnified, self will be hidden, and Christ will appear as all in all. Amen. This is Christian service. Powerful, powerful. If we keep the Lord ever before us, allowing our hearts to go out in thanksgiving and praise to him, we shall have a continual freshness in our religious life. Sometimes you have felt that your walk with the Lord is so stale. It's not going anywhere. You know the remedy? Start praising him. Start thanking him. And you will see, you will see how this will change. Our prayer will take the form of a conversation with God as we would talk with a friend. He will speak his mysteries to us personally and often. How often? Often. There will come to us a sweet, joyful sense of the presence of Jesus. The Lord desires us to make mention of his goodness and tell of his power. He is, he is honored by the expression of praise and thanksgiving. He says, whosoever offers praise glorifies me. Whosoever, whosoever praise, offer, offers praise glorifies me. The Lord desires us to appreciate the great plan of redemption. To realize our high privilege. Are you privileged? It is telling us we are highly privileged as children of God and to walk before him in obedience with grateful thanksgiving. He desires us to serve him in newness of life with gladness every day. 
He longs to see gratitude. Huh? He longs to see gratitude welling up in our hearts because our names are written in the Lamb's Book of Life. There has to be hope, folks. We have to maintain that blessed hope that Jesus is coming soon and he will take us from this misery into something better. But we have to see it with the eyes of faith. And because we can see it with the eyes of faith, then, then, and only then, our Christian walk will change, will take a different turn, that you will be concentrated only on Jesus. Can it happen? Yes, it can. Yes, it can. There was a, there was a, a, a church lady in the northeastern corner of Guatemala. 82, 1982. My parents were the, uh, serving that district. And she would often come to the parsonage. And people in town had her as demented. But you, she, was, she was demented, all right, but she was demented in the war. She was a faithful witness in the middle of the marketplace. And here we don't have, you don't know the concept of market, but it's, it's a huge place where everybody has the little shops. And you go there and you buy your grains and so forth. And everybody knew this lady. And she would go about her life. And all of a sudden, she would start sharing God's wonders with somebody. And right there, she would start singing. Singing, just like our Pentecostal brothers do. And people were saying, she wasn't. She wasn't crazy. She knew who her Savior was. It was about this tall. Wonderful lady. One day she came to the personage and I asked her, because I, I, I was not living with my parents then, but uh, I, I asked her. She started to tell me. She grew up orphaned. She was picked up by nuns in a monastery. She was taught Latin, how to pray everything in Latin and everything. You know how, 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 how they do. And then, then she came to the fullness of Jesus Christ through the three angels message. And she gained the perception of how wonderful God was to her. And she devoted and committed herself that as long as she lived, she didn't care whether the world would consider her crazy. She wasn't crazy. She was just fulfilling God's call. He longs to see gratitude welling up in our hearts because our names are written in the Lamb's book of life. Because we may cast all our cares upon him who cares for us. Jesus is right now in this heavenly sanctuary interceding for you and for me. Taking up your concerns, your woes, shortcomings. When we confess is interceding before the Father. But this is something beautiful that I want to share with you. I'm finished. The church of God below is one with the church of God above. So don't just don't take it for granted that you are you and I are doing a favor for God showing up to church. Don't ever, if you have that belief, change it. Believers on the earth and the beings in heaven who are who have never fallen constitute how many? One church. Every, listen to this word, every heavenly intelligence is interested in the assemblies of the saints who on earth meet to worship God. So this is a big deal. This is how God considers. When the meeting place is open, when the church doors are open, and we show up, it is a huge deal for the heavenly intelligences. Every heavenly intelligence is interested. In the inner court of heaven, they listen to the testimony of the witnesses for Christ in the outer court on earth. And the praise and thanksgiving from the worshipers below is taken up in the heavenly anthem. And praise and rejoicing sound through the heavenly court because Christ has not died in vain for the fallen sons of Adam. Amen. Isn't that something? Do you understand that? Did you get it? 
every time we sing, every time we pray, every time we utter praises of thanksgiving, those anthems are taken up and they ring through the bowels of heaven. That is the worship that God is expecting from each one of us. God teaches that we should assemble in his house to cultivate the attributes of perfect love. See the reason why we need to come to church? This will fit the dwellers of earth for the mansions that Christ has gone to prepare for all who love him. There they will assemble in the sanctuary from Sabbath to Sabbath, from one new moon to the other, to unite in loftiest strains of song, in praise and thanksgiving to him who sits upon the throne and to the Lamb forever and ever. Everlasting thanksgiving, folks. Amen. And of course, the prophet Isaiah. And it shall come to pass that from one new, to, new moon to another, and from one Sabbath to another, all flesh shall come to worship before me, says the Lord, with a heart of thanksgiving. This is a vision we try to call up our greatest trials, but they look so small compared with the far more exceeding and eternal weight of glory that surrounded us that we could not speak them out. And we all cried out, Hallelujah, heaven is cheap enough. And we touched our golden hearts and made heaven's arches ring. Heaven is cheap enough. Psalm 107, verse 8. All oh, that men would give thanks to the Lord for his goodness and for his wonderful works to the children of men. My appeal to you, my appeal to you, and I'll tell you, because I've been there, I've been there, feeling a burden to come to church. Oh, let somebody else, let somebody else do the talking. You know, how many times I still feel the nudges of my mom. Well, they were pretty sharp. Don't you have enough to sing? We're singing. We're all been there. We're all been there. In some way or another. But we are too old. Let me use that expression. We're too old to continue living that lifestyle as far as the Christian walk is concerned. You don't know what the devil has set up for you. And I, and I pray that, that God will preserve us to meet again next week. But we're not. The devil is like a roaring lion seeking whom to what? Devour, destroy, knock out, wipe out. We need to make arrangements. As the course of time is, we're just about to finish 2021. A new year is coming. But you know what? We don't have to wait until January. A new year starts today. A day from, from 365 days from now, it will be a new, a new year, right? So we cannot afford to wait for the, for the new, what you call that? Um, on New Year's Day resolutions. No, it's got to be today because we we only can with right now. We don't know what will happen five minutes from now. So brothers and sisters, if we truly, truly want to honor the Lord, if we want to honor his name being called as Christians, let us start practicing gratefulness, thankfulness, Worshiping him in spirit and in truth. That's what it means. In spirit and in truth. And you will see, you will see, test the Lord. You will see how our lives will change. You have issues at home. You have issues at work. You have issues at, with family. You will see how those 
will start to diminish. I will be corrected because God's blessing will be upon you because you have learned how to be grateful to him. Okay? Grateful to him. Let's stand up. Let's stand up and sing this song. It's just a, 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 the curse of this, of this song. And um, we'll sing it twice. We'll sing it twice. Yeah, it works. <laughs> Thank you, Lord, for saving my soul. Thank you, Lord, for making me whole. Thank you, Lord, for giving to me my great salvation so rich and free. Second time. Let this be our prayer. Thank you, Lord, for saving my soul. Thank you, Lord, for making me whole. Thank you, Lord, for giving to me thy great salvation so rich and free. Thank you, Lord, for being our creator and our redeemer. You have said in your word that whom you love, you chastise. And I think we have been challenged today. How our attitude should be towards you. If we have not been up to par with you, corporately, I ask for forgiveness. Forgiveness and give us the power through your Holy Spirit to change course. And I will leave the rest individually, each individual here present and those who are watching, to take it up with you so you can correct each one to show where each one should improve. But thank you for Jesus Christ. In him we pray. Amen. Amen.